Hi, Lee Phillips here. Let me talk to you a minute about a concept of investing through an HSA, health savings account. The HSAs were created so that a couple could put like $7,000, it changes a little bit each year, it goes up with the cost of living, but let's say $7,000. Couple put $7,000 into the account and then they use that $7,000 to reimburse themselves or to pay directly for medical expenses. <clears throat> and that's basically everything but the over-the-counters. And so it works out so that you can pay your medical expenses tax-free. That's a big deal, guys. That's huge. That's actually not why I'm talking about it today. Uh, the HSA is a cool item. It does require that the insurance company or an approved trustee uh, manages the money that goes into this HSA. Now, a lot of the self-directed IRA dudes have decided that, hey, here's a source of money that could be used for investment. And it will grow without a tax. This isn't like a 125 plan, the cafeteria flex plan, whatever you want to call it. This isn't like the 125 plan where it's a use it or lose it deal. If I don't use my $7,000 this year, it stays in my account, and it grows each year if I invest this $7,000. It grows without a tax. And so it works very well. If you're an employee of, of the company and not the owner of the company, then I'm not sure you want to do this because these accounts aren't vested in the employees. And when the employee leaves, anything in their H HSA account just reverts to the company. If it's your company and you're doing the HSA, then you don't really care if it reverts to the company and you're going to retire and you're going to keep the company going and it, it's still going to be there. But you can invest this money. If the self-directed IRA dude says that you can invest it in real estate, you can invest it in real estate. The problem is you're back to where you are with your retirement plans, your IRAs that this self-directed guy's doing. They're going to charge you a fee for everything. You don't have enough money in here to really go out and buy a piece of real estate. So they set up an LLC and then they will actually transfer the HSA money over to the LLC and then you have checkbook authority over it. Now, when you do this, you can invest it. It grows without a tax. Uh, you've got to worry about a lot of things, unrelated business income tax, debt finance tax. I mean, you've only got $14,000 in this HSA. That's not buying a piece of real estate. So you transfer it to the LLC. The LLC gets a loan. And so there's debt associated with it. There's taxes associated with having that debt finance this piece of property. So you got to pay attention to all of those. You got to pay attention to the self-dealing rules, the prohibited transaction rules, all the rules that you would generally have to play with or pay attention to if you were ha if you had an IRA and you were forming the LLC, the checkbook LLC, whatever you want to call it. I frankly don't think it will work in that I will guarantee that unless you've paid $40,000 to some law firm to write this LLC for you, your operation of the LLC, transfer of stuff into the, it violates lots of IRA rules, lots of rules associated with the ERISA, the Employee Retirement Income Security Act retirement plans, or benefit plans, which an SHA is one of those. So, yeah, I would not do it personally. You could put money in it. If you've got money left over, fine, invest it in the, uh, in the account at your bank that pays 4% or something. That's not what everybody wants to do. Understand that. Go ahead and do it. But you might someday say, well, Lee told me so. So this is what we're dealing with in these benefit plans, ERISA benefit plans, 
HSAs, specifically the one we're talking about right now, where we can put money in and invest it. Lee Phillips talking about ah, the possibilities of HSAs. They're good things because they make your medical stuff tax-free. And that's huge, guys. So use them, by all means. Investing, eh, maybe not. 